So it might be identified as a Christian belief frequently is just a reflection of the culture. All branches of Christianity are not the same. Weddings differ. So you see things like uh, Greek Orthodox. If you've seen a Greek Orthodox wedding, again, you won't see the crowns in, in Protestant weddings for sure. And in addition, uh, in Greek Orthodox weddings, you tend not to have an exchange of rings. That's not a part of the wedding service. It comes at a different time at the Petropole. Quaker ceremonies, very similar to any other friend's ceremony, which tends to be, tends to be pretty quiet. Silent worship, a couple sits there. They don't swear an oath. And, and since there's no clergy, no one person marries them. They're seeing, they see that they're married by God. And again, it's a very different feeling. If you see, a, again, a friend's service or a Quaker wedding service, it's a very different feeling. Um, I, I'd call it radically egalitarian. Yeah, I think that's a fair, fair description. Put on independent. Um, I just didn't have another word for this. I thought this was, an, it, for me, this was a terrific, terrifically interesting example. So wedding I attended, and it was a Christian wedding. It happened, it happened to be Filipino, I don't think it was. And, and they incorporated all sorts of traditions within it. One of the traditions that I was uh, uh, surprised to see was the breaking of the glass. Um, I was surprised to see that because I associate it primarily with Jewish weddings. And they did break the glass, and in the, in the bulletin or in the program, they had an explanation. Again, caught me off guard. The breaking of the glass, glass has sexual connotations. It's a symbolic enactment of breaking the hymen, which explains why it's considered important that the groom accomplish the task. I thought, wow, I just, by reading the bulletin, I just know so much more about your hymen than I did. <laughs> 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 oh. and so, but again, if, if you would experience this, so frequently, if you would experience this, and, you, and, and that was the only Christian worship ser service you ever experienced, you might leave that and go, hey, this is Christianity. It's like, well, you know, it, it happens, but not everywhere. <laughs> so all branches are not the same. Weddings differ. And ancient and modern forms of weddings have changed. So just the language of the ceremony. And I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll use some language that, that I'm very familiar with, language that, that, I, that I, traditionally, people said, I now pronounce you man and wife. Now people say, yeah, now people tend to say, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Again, that, and that kind of makes sense. That, yeah, I think that should, should make sense. Um, similarly, who gives this woman to be married to this man? When does this occur? When the father gives it. You, very frequently when the father gives, gives the bride away. And again, we see adaptations of this. Um, so we still sometimes see this language, and the father can say, I do, or her mother and I do, or we do, or a different kind of question is sometimes used. Who presents this woman and, to be married to each other? And then both parents say, we do. And of course, there are other situations where, where the, no one presents. Where, if anyone knows for any reason why these two should not enter in holy matrimony, speak now or forever hold your peace. It's like the graduate, right? The, the, when you see that, a lot, of, a lot of churches don't do that. A lot of churches, it's a part of the liturgy, so they have to do it. I'll tell you, the, the Presbyterian church tends to substitute something there. I'm the Presbyterian minister. We tend to substitute, and this is what we substitute. As family friends, you've been invited not to be passive observers, but active participants in Jessica and Adam's promises to one another. So I ask all of you, will you give your blessings to them, promise to do everything in your power to uphold them in their marriage? If so, please say we will. Again, it's a very, very different tone. If, if you have something against them being married, be yeah, just, don't be, just, just don't speak up. You know? <laughs> the, only, the only downside of this liturgy is that everyone we marry has to be named Adam and Jessica. <laughs> And until death do us part. This is this is something that I do not change when I I have a number of people who, who say they don't want to say until death do us part um, in their vows, but they want to say so long as love endure. Yeah, that can be and, tomorrow. <laughs> and, and, and I, I think that's I think it's a distinctly non non Christian perspective perspective. So I I was gonna say one couple asked me if they could have this, and I said, if, if only if the only wedding presents you get are paper plates. Um, <laughs> and so China. Um, ancient and modern forms of weddings have changed over the years. The last thing I just want to mention is that scripture can be very challenging. Um, uh, you know, there's not, a lot of, there's not a lot of scripture that deals with, specifically with weddings. There's for Jesus' first miracle was the wedding of Canaan, but that doesn't really say a lot about it. One of the few descriptions we have comes from Paul. Now, Paul himself was celibate. Paul himself didn't have sex, and he wants other people to be like him. He says, I wish that all were as I myself am. 
But each has a particular gift from God, one having one kind, another a different kind. To the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is well for them to remain unmarried as I am. But if they're not practicing self-control, they should marry. For it's better to marry than to be aflame with passion. <laughs> Which is a passage that I've never seen in a worship service yet. <laughs> Although I would love to see this. I'd love to have that passage read and then to turn to the groom and say, are you aflame with passion? And they say, yeah, I am. And to the bride and say, are you aflame with passion? I am. And then maybe just the marriage would be consummated right there. <laughs> A passage that we very frequently see is from the, the book of Ruth. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. How many of you have heard that passage before? Okay, a handful of you have. It's, it's an interesting passage because there, Ruth is actually talking to her mother-in-law. Um, she's not talking to, to her husband. So it's an interesting passage, but it's, it shifts into a different context, and it's used in a different way. Is that appropriate? You know, actually, I think it's absolutely appropriate. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, um, you, many of you know this, and I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels who do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. If I have prophetic powers, understand all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away my possessions, I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, kind, envious, not boastful or arrogant or rude, does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This is, this is probably the most common passage. I love to tell you such a funny stories about this, but it's, or interesting stories about it. But the passage actually, chapter, chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians deals with speaking in tongues. Chapter 14 deals with speaking in tongues. And this passage deals with speaking in tongues. People spoke in tongues, and they thought that they had better gifts than everyone else. And Paul starts, and says, if I speak in the tongue, but don't have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. And he's telling these people not to think of themselves as higher than other people. He's not talking about specific marriage, although it is beautiful. I want to share one quick clip and then qualify the clip. Some of you have 